Are you a volunteer walking yeah. the dogs? His name's Trip. He's new. Hey, Trip. Hey, Trip. Oh, wow. All right, so who are you and what we're doing? Uh, I'm Dane, and today we are launching a weather balloon to the upper atmosphere. All right. I've been wanting to see one of these done for a while. Yeah. So we got some uh, tarps laid out so we, we don't ruin the balloon. Laid out. We've got a parachute. We've got a 40-foot burst diameter balloon. Uh, normally we've done it with 20-foot burst diameter balloons. Um, so hopefully this will be a little bit higher altitude before it pops. Uh, how high do you think it will get to? Oh, uh, with the uh, with the bigger balloon, probably like 120,000. Oh wow! <laughs> so we, we can't actually touch it without gloves. Yep. Put some right. gloves probably want to cut out a piece of this, put it on the back, All right. so we can fit the camera into it, and then cut a hole in that, put the camera in it, and then cut a hole in the fabric, and then tape it onto the styrofoam. Okay, how big a hole do we need there? Just the, just, no bigger than the face, um, but not big enough for this back part to go through. Is it right in the middle there, or should we put it somewhere towards the bottom? Uh, actually towards the bottom, uh, high enough from the bottom that we can insulate below it, but high, low center of gravity is probably the best. Okay, so I had the GoPro plugged in all morning, but for some reason it didn't charge, so we're going to do something here. Get a little battery pack. And we convert it to this Yeah, see if that'll work. And just leave it clipped up. <laughs> it looks like that should work then. <laughs> With that battery pack we just gotta on make there, sure it'll just stay on. Maybe zip tie this to that styrofoam. Exactly. So, when it crashes into the ground, it'll probably yank that out. But yeah. at that point, who cares? <laughs> Perfect. All right. Adding a little bit more insulation to our launch box. You said lunchbox or lunchbox? Lunchbox, right? <laughs> okay. Zip tie the parachute right to that. Yeah. And then uh, at the top of the parachute have a cord that goes to the bottom of the weather balloon. Okay, so you have the parachute already ready to go as soon as the balloon yeah, pops? Yeah, so when it pops. Okay. And then hopefully, like normally what we do is we give uh, a lot of rope between the parachute and the balloon right so that if it gets stuck in the trees the thing that usually gets stuck is like the, the parachute. parachute so okay. oh so yeah between the package and the parachute so i got a prediction here that shows that it is just going to kind of either hang out over the mountains or the, into the valley so i don't know how accurate that is but that'd be really nice if it just landed, landed in the field right back where we started almost Although Sod's Law would state that it's going to land right on top of Naomi Peak. <laughs> okay, so this is what we got. There's the battery pack, Geiger counter. Uh, we stuck the GPS to the outside with a tow warmer stuck right to it. We'll add lights to There's it. A couple of, oh yeah, put the light on there. Okay, so I want to do put in a piece of this uh, opium lettuce leaf. Uh, some rings from my chain mail, which will uh, stay in there. And some blueberries that we can eat when we find it. <laughs> Sound good? 300 cubic feet of helium. I'm sure we won't use nearly all of that. <laughs> so where are we putting the balloon out? I guess we can just lay it out here. Okay. And then uh, depending on which way the, we get the hose facing the right way, how much does this weigh? Uh, 1,600 grams. Okay, so it's gonna be a lot of cubic feet to run through that little hose. We might be able to just put it straight up to the nozzle. Yeah. <laughs> There's the balloon. How big is the opening on that? It's pretty big. So to seal it up, it's kind of a little bit of a chore. Um, we usually zip tie it. Uh -huh. 
duct tape around the zip tie, fold it back up, zip tie that, and then duct tape around that. Okay. And that is usually pretty good. We could probably wrap around that handle. Just yeah, blinking. Yeah. It's not very bright now, but if it's dark out, it'll... Yeah, I could even up the exposure on the camera. And uh, we'd be able to see that from pretty far away if it was dark. That's a good idea. I think it wouldn't be as hard. <laughs> this in here. I am going to tie a noose. <laughs> all right, well that's good and then we, we just, just attach this to the balloon. What uh, amount of tying do we put on this to the balloon? Uh, like how long? We don't have to put too much. Just maybe enough so that it falls away from the balloon itself so the balloon will open up. How long you think? Maybe a little bit longer. Um, uh, twice that. Twice this? Yeah, that should be enough. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Ooh, that thing just exploded up, didn't it? Dang. What is that from? It's the toe warmer. That's insane. It got really hot. Should we leave it out or should I keep it in there? I don't think it'll hurt anything that way. I mean, feel that. It's crazy that it's blowing up like that. Yeah, pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, this whole thing is like melting the heat. Well, it'll get to minus 60 up there. Yeah, I'm just thinking of maybe we move these just a little bit farther away from the equipment. Okay. <laughs> um, how do we know if we got enough in there? Uh, if we have enough lift, we just want to be slightly past neutral point. Right. How do we know if we're at that point? Once we attach this, it takes the weight. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave it like that. Put it by earplugs. <laughs> getting there. What's that? It's getting there. Alright. Oh yeah, I think that's that's probably good. Okay. And we can uh take it. Do you wanna zip tie it? So we can pull this zip tie off. Chug it. Pull the zip tie off, uh, zip tie it here, and then uh, if you want to put that string or, uh, from the lunchbox around, and then we can see if it's really, or maybe just the handle, like closer to it. Let's just wrap it around it. Okay. Yeah, pull back on that right there. Uh, sorry. Yep. And then we uh, fold this. That's it. Okay. Well, as long as it's touching this, we're good. And then more tape. Or another zip tie. More. One zip tie and then tape. Here. You can let go and all. Okay. This. All right, go for it. Yes, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, that, that is pretty, isn't it? Look at the shadow. <laughs> Yeah, it's up there somewhere, huh? <laughs> you got the first ping? There's the first ping. So we'll get updates every 10 minutes. I guess I moved that far. How far is that? Not far, we can still see it. What altitude is it sitting at? Uh, I don't think it says. But you can see the satellite image. Okay. So it's crossed the river now. There's where we started. So I just put the regulator back on and we started at 2000 PSI. So let's see what we got left in the tank. Uh, about a thousand, so we used half our helium here for that. That's already over into Wyoming. Yep. That wouldn't, the corner of Idaho and Wyoming and now it's at least it's kind of staying near where there's roads. Yeah, or at least parallel to it. We should have put more helium in it. <laughs> yeah, we definitely should have. Oh, well, right. part of me wants to see how far this thing can go. All right, go well, I think it. I'm going to have you go after it. Yeah. Call me that. if you uh, have trouble. <laughs> All right, so it's the next morning, uh, roughly 17 hours since the launch, and we finally got a ping back from the uh, transponder. So the balloon has uh, just landed or is in the process of landing. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, Dane drove out to Wyoming to try to be near to the landing location, but it turns out the balloon actually kind of turned around and went out to Nevada. In fact, it's looking like it's uh, out near Elko. So, yeah, it's a little farther than we thought it would end up. <laughs> uh, but it sort of makes sense after a flight lasting that long. You know, it's just going to travel ways. So since I'm closer, I'm actually going to go after it. So I'll see you guys down there after a five hour drive. <laughs> All right, so I am uh, currently an hour's drive north of Elko, Nevada. The uh, balloon, if the GPS is accurate, <laughs> is somewhere over there about uh, 2,000 feet away. So I guess I'm going to go hike and uh, see if I can find it. Little GPS here. Hopefully, it'll get me within a few feet or so. I think I just found it. Right over there. A little bit of blue and white. Awesome. You know, driving all this way, I really didn't believe that I'd find it. There it is. It's insane. <laughs> this thing traveled hundreds of miles. And the balloon burst, so it got up to altitude. Well, let's see what's going on inside of it, shall we? The GoPro still there. That's good. Our light is no longer blinking. It probably went dead. Let's open this thing up. Alright, our blueberries are all there. Hand warmer. The guy canner is still on. I'm gonna have to turn that off because it's probably rewriting its data. Oh, the blueberry actually exploded. <laughs> Look at that. I guess they do have a little bit of an air pocket inside. Well, let's see if the blueberry is still any good. It's a little warm. There you go. <laughs> Here's that leaf, which is pretty desiccated. I'm not sure if that's just from drying out from sitting in the sun here. And then, of course, there's those metal rings, which will become part of my chainmail suit. Okay. And here we are. Ah, 
Well, I get to go drive home. <laughs> so I've got some bad news. Uh, this here is the entire video of the balloon, well, the, the balloon captured. The camera seems to have shut down after only about three minutes. I'll uh, put this at the end of this video so you guys can watch the whole thing. Although I warn you, it is pretty dizzying. Ah, <sighs> this is upsetting though. We expected the camera to record for at least a couple hours. Uh, my guess is that the battery pack wasn't charging it fast enough to overcome the uh, power drain. And so the camera just died. You know what? Next time I do one of these balloons, I'm putting a time-lapse camera in there that can record for a week. <laughs> well, fortunately, the Geiger counter recorded for a lot longer, although it still stopped recording before the balloon landed. See, it stopped recording over here at uh, uh, 3.17 a.m. And uh, the balloon landed at about 8 a.m., so we are missing some data. Uh, this uh, radiation should correspond with the altitude, because as it got higher, more of the radiation could get through the balloon. So we got the last ping from the tracking device. That would have happened at about 30,000 feet PM. That kind of so shows you what the radiation levels were then. And if we extrapolate out, you can see that it must have went much higher. Uh, in fact, if I were to guess, I'd say that the balloon went up and then maybe the sun went down and it got cold or the atmosphere contracted and the balloon came back down a little bit and kind of, you know, kind of hovered around whatever altitude this was until morning when the sun hit it again and the balloon probably rose up to an even higher altitude before popping and then falling back down to the ground. There you go. At least we got some data out of it. So now you might ask, uh, what about the other things that went up on the balloon? I think I showed the blueberries. Uh, we did eat a few of them, but also I wanted to try growing the seeds from these. You know, they got exposed to a little bit more radiation, right? <laughs> Probably not enough to make any sort of difference. It's still kind of cool. But there was also these rings. These rings are, of course, some rings that will eventually end up on my chainmail. Uh, and you can see, uh, they are a little bit different than the uh, other rings that I've got. So here's the four rings that went up on the balloon. Uh, you see one of them I've kind of cleaned up, but they still haven't been polished. And here's another four rings which are more representative of what the uh, rest of the rings on the chainmail are. You can see these ones have been brazed together, so they're a copper ring. And I've used a bit of uh, brass rod when I'm welding them together. But these ones that went on the balloon, I used a piece of silver rod, silver wire, to weld them. <laughs> so I'll just make them a little bit more special. On the finished chainmail hubbard, those rings will probably go right along here on my collar. So there it is, my first balloon launch. Uh, obviously a lot went wrong, uh, we didn't get as much data as we'd like, uh, but we learned a lot. Uh, you know, put more helium in the balloon, uh, have two cameras, if not a camera that can record for longer, and you know, plan for the possibility of the balloon being in the air for way longer than expected. And also, I'm going to try to work on some way to keep it from spinning. Uh, some, someone suggested pool noodles. I'll look into that. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. But... Is it, isn't it enough? I think so. I have a feeling it's gonna hit that car though. Do you wanna do the honors? Wave. All right. Get ready to run after.